drinking yourself to death. I first want to look at what does death by alcohol look like. And before we start on this, right, I'm not trying to put you on a downer here, right? I'm not trying to make you afraid of stopping drinking alcohol. The exact opposite. I'm trying to give you a reality check on what alcohol is doing to you and to help you to see that your own future depends on you getting rid of things like this, getting rid of that instant gratification mentality. But most importantly, and I think a more visceral point here is to stop putting shit into your body that is detrimental to you and your whole life. Death by alcohol is not a pretty sight, right? It's not a good end. It's not a great life. You know, that's the most important part here. You're not living a good life when you drink alcohol, when you drink alcohol to the extremes, when you drink alcohol so that your life starts to revolve around alcohol, which mine was. And I think most people that are coming here watching these videos, that is the reality, or at least it's the fear. And one of the issues of this is that it's a slow death for most people. It's not a quick death. You know, you don't just have a heart attack and that's it, it's over and done with. It's a slow death, and it's a slow death, not just in physical terms, but it's a mental death. It, you know, you die long before you actually physically die, long before you draw your last breath. You have a mental death where you give up on yourself, you give up on life, you give up on everything that you wanted when you were young. So as I said, I'm not trying to scare you here into uh, carrying on drinking, I'm not trying to put the fear of God into you, right? What I'm doing is trying to give you a wake-up call to what you're doing to yourself and to at least get you thinking about things from that perspective. I mean, if that's what you want to do with your life, if you just want to drink yourself into oblivion to escape from life, if you want to numb yourself so much that you don't really think about living too much, then, you know, that's up to you. It's your life, it's your body, right? But I really want to try and uh, give you a different perspective on this. You know, I stopped drinking alcohol 10 years ago and it was the best decision that I have ever made. I've done more in the last 10 years than I did in uh, my whole life before that. And that's really one of the reasons why I can, I can talk about this with full knowledge that I'm speaking from personal experience. I'm speaking from a guy who spent uh, 30 years drinking this stuff, you know, 46 years of my life I spent with the idea that alcohol was something that I wanted to do. You know, maybe not when I was a kid, but as you're growing older, you you become accustomed to the idea that you're going to start drinking alcohol as part and pro, uh, part of the process of growing up. It's just a part of your life. It becomes normal. And that is a delusion. It's a, a sickness, really, in society that we look at alcohol as being a normal part of our lives because it causes sickness, it causes physical sickness and it causes mental sickness. But 10 years into this sober journey and I have seen some extraordinary changes in my life, some extraordinary changes in my life. And I wouldn't not do that for, I wouldn't go back to drinking alcohol if you paid me a million dollars. I wouldn't take one drink of alcohol. Now, when I was drinking, I, I was slowly killing myself. I was putting alcohol into my mouth and I was going through a slow suicide. And that's the only way I can put this. You know, my life was disappearing before my eyes. My life was unraveling quickly, you know, and that process of unraveling speeds up the more you get into this. You know, the more you drink, the more that process winds up because you're killing your organs f uh, fast. So the organs can't do their job. You're killing your life fast. You know, you just, your life becomes more and more revolved around alcohol. And the more it becomes revolved around alcohol, the more your life shrinks and the less you're going to do with your life. So you're speeding up that process of mental death. I wanted to be a hero to my son and I ended up being a zero or heading towards that direction. You know, I was teaching my son how to become a drug addict, basically pure and simple, teaching him how to become a drug addict. I had my last drink on the 1st of January 2013 because of my son, because I wanted to become a better father, because I wanted to become a better role model for my son, you know, and since then, as I said, it's the best decision that I've made ever. As I said, it's the best decision I made ever in my life, not only because I stopped drinking alcohol, not only because I became a better father and a better role model to my son, 
I became a better person. And because you become a better person, you really, you start to see things, you start to expand your life. But most importantly, and it's taken most of that 10 years that I stopped drinking alcohol, my son has finally stopped drinking himself and has got onto this road. And it's only off in a couple of months, but I'm telling you the difference, the change in him is amazing. You know, it gets me just thinking about it, you know. You know, I was living life with alcohol delusion. And I see it in everybody that I, that I coach, that alcohol delusion. You know, I always had done from that first pint, from the first drink, before that first drink, we live in this alcohol delusion. Like I said, people start drinking alcohol long before they actually put the alcohol into their mouths because they're programmed into believing that alcohol is a normal thing. I used to look up to the Hellraisers, you know, we, my dad's favorite actors were people like John Wayne and uh, big drinkers, uh, big smokers, people who were men, you know. Um, and to me, looking back on that, they're sad people pretending. You know, these actors are pretending in the roles that they have, but they're also pretending in the role that they're playing in life, this Hellraiser role. I mean, most of these people die young. And it's not, as I said, just the fact that they die young. It's the fact that they spent a lot of their years uh, escaping from the consequences of their actions. Look, no matter what way you look at this, Alcohol is a con, right? Big alcohol cons us. It cons us into consuming their product. Quit alcohol, same thing. You know, there's a big industry revolving around that and they con us because they want us to spend a lot of money and to have this fear that we can't stop drinking alcohol on our own. Other drinkers con us because they want us to believe that their drinking is normal and that what we're doing is abnormal. And that's a con. Right? It's this thing where they're saying to us, well, you know, yeah, you're, you're the one that's got a disease. You're the one that's an alcoholic. You're the one that's this. You're the one that can't handle your drink. You're the one that's doing something abnormal. Everybody that puts this poison into their bodies is doing something abnormal. This is not supposed to be in your body in these amounts. But in reality, we're the biggest victims of our own con. We con ourselves into believing that there are benefits to putting this stuff into our bodies. And it has so many detrimental effects. Like I said, you have a slow mental death because of what you're doing to yourself. And we believe the bullshit. You know, even when we stop drinking alcohol and people around us say to us, ah, you know, one or two is not gonna do you any harm. You know, how many times have you tried to moderate your drinking? And where does that lead you? Right back to the start again. One of the things that I noticed about other people when I stopped drinking was that as soon as I said to other people, I don't drink alcohol, the first thing they did was defend their own position. And that says everything about it. Now, alcohol is gonna be around in your life even when you stop drinking alcohol for the foreseeable future anyway. It's a big part of our society. You know, this is a, a big curse as far as I'm concerned because you see life without alcohol. And you can't convince somebody that you love to stop drinking alcohol unless they want to. That's a horrible thing for me. It's embedded in our why, in our reason, right? The reasons why we live, in our celebrations, in our successes in life. It's embedded, it provides an escape from life. But it's that escape from life which kills your life, which makes everything revolve around life because it's an instant gratification mindset. And that instant gratification mindset leads you down a cul-de-sac. It leads you down a dark alleyway where there's very little chance of escaping as long as you're drinking. You know, one of the biggest curses of this, like I said, is when you see the damage yourself, you've come accustomed to that, you've, you're making the changes happen in your own life, but you're seeing other people in your life that are still doing, they're still going down that same road and there's nothing you can do to change it. So that's one of the things for me as a teacher is trying to convince other people that it's in their best interests to stop drinking alcohol. Uh, trying to convince other people that moderation is something which will keep them in this cycle and it will get worse and worse and worse and eventually they'll give up with uh, any kind of decent moderation and they'll just give up on life, you know, that mental death that I've been talking about. You know, they have to be at least part willing to go through this whole process to um, 
feel the fear and do it anyway to try and reduce the fear that they have to go from moderation to full badass quitting drinking alcohol and no matter what happens you're never going to drink alcohol again right and that requires people to overcome a certain amount of ambivalence so uh, this conflict that they have in their minds they're so used to drinking they're so used to dealing with life with alcohol uh, using alcohol as a medication to get over that medical uh, that medication mindset and they've got the other side of themselves which knows that the damage that they're causing. You know, their, their body is attuned to this, that anytime the alcohol goes in, that it's a toxin. You know, we convince ourselves, we uh, convince ourselves that what we're doing is right. We tell ourselves these big fictions that keep us drinking for so many years. Like I said, I did it for 30 years. So I've no excuse for any of that stuff, except that I deceived myself. So we have to overcome that ambivalence. We have to overcome the fear of living life without alcohol, which is a big fear in the beginning, but it's only reduced as you move into your life and you start to see, well, you know, my life can be really good. So for me, especially in these videos, it's trying to get people to see how much of a wrecking ball alcohol is, how much of a wrecking ball alcohol is. And people don't realize how much of a wrecking ball alcohol is because it comes in slow motion. You know, it's not coming in fast. It's coming in really, really slowly. And that personal damage, that damage that you're, you're going through, the physical damage, the mental damage, the psychological damage, which I think is the worst of all, you know, that killing you slowly throughout your life, killing your life slowly throughout your life. You know, that's something that happens very, very slowly. And that's the problem. So it's trying to get people to see that there is an alternative universe out there, that there is a life without alcohol, that there is a great life without alcohol, that alcohol is holding you back from that great life, that the life that you've been living so far, right, because of your drinking alcohol is like living in a prison cell. It's like going around with a straight jacket on and taking that straight jacket off stepping through that prison cell wall or the door and going into this alternative universe and sticking with it, you know? Despite all the fear, despite the fear of missing out on what you think you're gonna be missing out on, despite the fear of the future, despite all the fears that we have just as a natural human being of the new, you're gonna go through that and you're gonna do it anyway. Right? You know, busting through some of those mental barriers, helping people to bust through those mental barriers is one of the joys of my life of teaching. And it's seeing that transformation in people's faces, seeing it in their eyes when they, they finally cop onto it and they finally start to say, ah, do you know what? I'm never going back to that. I can safely say to myself now that I'm never going back to that. That is one of the best joys of my life life of my career and the reason why is because i've been there i understand completely where they're, they're going through i've been through that whole delusion of drinking alcohol i've been through all the fears of stopping drinking alcohol i bust through all those ideas that cravings were going to kill me that the alcohol quitting drinking alcohol was going to kill me once you get sober and you're sober for a while then it becomes beyond sober it's leaving sober behind sober as a word you don't call yourself sober anymore because you've left alcohol behind and you've left everything behind that used to be a part of your life that's associated with alcohol, you know, that black hole. And it all becomes part of building your self-confidence, building your self-worth, building your self-efficacy. And it's the self-efficacy which is the most important. Self-efficacy is when you believe in yourself, when you believe that anything that you want to do, you can do. When you believe that you either have the skills to do this or you can learn the skills. So you've got self-belief in your own ability to deal with life, to get through life. Believe in that you can sort any problem, any time, any place, anywhere. Death by alcohol is a long and painful process, right? It kills you slowly. It kills you physically slowly. It kills you mentally slowly, but it kills your life long before you've taken your last breath. I wanna reiterate that. Stopping drinking alcohol is not, it's an easy thing, it's simple, right? You don't put the alcohol into your mouth. Stopping drinking alcohol in the long term is not easy because you have to make so many changes in your life, but it is well worth it. It's the best decision that I made uh, 10 years ago. It's the best decision that I made deliberately in my whole life. And it's definitely the best decision that you will ever make. Um, I want you to watch this video on 10 of the best benefits of stopping drinking. Take care of yourself. Onwards and upwards. Bye now.